Hello from the Beanbag and welcome to another episode of Daily Encouragements with Naomi and video number three in our Fruit of the Spirit series and fruit number three is peace so that's what we are going to talk about today and if you haven't go and check out yesterday's uh, short because I shared some scripture in there about um, the peace of God which is really fitting and I think we're also gonna reread it again in this video but yeah go check that out because it's really encouraging that's quite a parallel um, yeah so let's get into this let's do this so Fruit of the Spirit number three, peace. The peace of God that we can have through being in relationship with him and allowing him to uh, work in our lives and bring out that peace is, is just amazing. And, and, you know, like I said um, in my video on joy, it is like joy that's unspeakable. It is peace that is unspeakable that you're just like, wow. Wow. And, you know, I think sometimes we try to explain it and all we can say is, God, it's God. You know, um, because it's not peace that is in our control. It is supernatural peace that you know it's peace the world can't give and it's peace the world can't take away because it is from God and to be able to walk through life in that peace of God means I think we often walk very lightly through life because we have the assurance and the confidence to know that God's got it and that everything will be okay because God is in control and God's peace when that's in effect and when that's working in our lives it is just amazing amazing peace that we can't sit with our human brains and explain and it is peace that we don't deserve cause, because none of the gifts from God are gifts we as humans deserve. God who is so loving and such a good father gives us those good gifts and wants us to know his peace and to walk in his peace and to just sit and rest in his peace. In his peace. So let's look at some scripture because I found some, again, really good ones, real pearlers. Um, so let's start with John 14, verse 27. And this is Jesus talking, saying, I leave the gift of peace with you. My peace, not the kind of fragile peace given by the world, but my perfect peace. Don't yield to fear or be troubled in your hearts. Instead, be courageous. What a, a commission. What a, you know, a mantle from God going, I give you my peace. Here is my peace. So therefore, go and be courageous in that. And, you know, like I was saying, you know, it's not peace that the world can give. And it says right here, not the kind of fragile peace. I love that. It's not, you know, he doesn't just go, oh, not just the peace the world can give, but the fragile peace. Not the kind of fragile peace given by the world, but my perfect peace. Because everything about God and everything in God is perfect. So therefore, his peace is perfect peace. Don't yield to fear or be troubled in your heart. Instead, be courageous because we have the peace of God in our hearts 
So therefore, we can go and do just far out courageous things for him. Because we have his peace. And his peace is just... It is amazing, amazing. Uh, I'm going to share a wee story. Um, a few years ago, I was uh, engaged to a guy. And the whole entire time, I, was, I can't remember how long I was engaged with him. It was only a few months. But the whole entire time um, I was engaged to him, I did not have a peace. And then through talking to some really good friends and trusted people in my life, I decided that I needed to end the relationship. And oh my goodness, the peace of God I had once I ended that relationship was amazing. I tell you, I've never experienced peace like that before. Because I knew, I knew in my spirit that ending that relationship was what God was saying and you know, he just gave me such amazing peace when I walked away from that relationship so just yeah it is tangible it is it's intangible in the way that we can't see it and we can't just go huh oh, yeah mine but it is tangible that in the way that when we walk in obedience to God we can, you know, we feel that peace of God in our lives and in our bodies. I knew, I knew, and my, you know, my tummy told me the peace, just the peace of God that I had. It was amazing. So, yeah, and God, and God is, and you know, He He longs to give His children good gifts. And, you know, as I keep saying, the gifts, the fruit of the Spirit are nine of those gifts that he wants to give us. And he wants to be cultivated in our life. And he wants to, you know, to help us and encourage us to walk in those gifts and to be just growing in those gifts because we can never stop growing. You know, if we've if we've stopped growing, there may be an issue. You know, it's, it's not healthy. It's not good to stop growing, um, particularly in God, because there's just so much to to grow in, to learn, to know, to just get in our hearts when we walk with God. So, just peace of God you know it's peace we can show to others and and extend to others when life is rubbish when life is rocky when when things are going on that you just sit there and go wow and other people you know freak out about that but when we have the peace of God we can sit there and go yes the world has gone absolutely mad and crazy and, and it's ridiculous right now. But, but God, and you can sit there and go, but I know that God is in control and that I can't do anything to change necessarily what is going on in either my world or in the world around me, I can't change the craziness and the chaos and the the ridiculousness that is happening. But I can think about my response to it and I can sit in the peace of God knowing that God is in control all the time. That that never changes. Never ever changes. He is He is always going to be in control because He is God. He is God. 
and he sees the bigger picture. He knows. He knew everything before it happened. He knew all what is happening in the world right now, the craziness, the ridiculousness. He knows what, exactly what is going on. And yet he still remains at peace. Now, he's a peaceful God. He, there is scripture that says he is slow to anger. Which, what's the opposite of anger? Peace. He's just sitting there peacefully loving people and just looking at, at what is happening. And, and yes, he, he is God and does things and, you know, but he is just a God of peace who just is watching us, loving us and just allowing peace to be cultivated in our lives for it to grow so that when we connect with other people who aren't feeling at peace or or are walking in the peace of God we can be that steady person that isn't wavering all over the place and, and worrying and and in the chaos themselves because we stand firm in the peace of God and we are courageous in the face of the chaos in the, in the heart of the storm we are Now, if you look at the um, story in the Bible when uh, Jesus is on the boat with his disciples, he's sleeping, a storm kicks off, they all freak out <laughs> and go, what are you doing sleeping? Wake up, we're about to die. And he just gets up and goes, calmly goes, with authority, yes, but calmly goes. Peace. Oh, sorry, storm. Stop. Pretty much. You know? They weren't his exact words, I don't think, but stop. You know? Just peacefully calm the storm. Like, that's some amazing stuff right there. Like, you know, I can't. Like, I probably could. You know? authority of Jesus walk out and go just, just stop storm you know calmly just stop but yeah that, you know just such evidence of a God of peace right there yeah <sighs> you know as Christians we are not called into chaos. We are not called to stir up chaos and confusion and all that kind of stuff. We, we are called to walk in peace. And to walk in peace with others. Now it's such a um, multifaceted word, the peace of God. And, you know, not just the word, but peace, God's peace itself is, is so multifaceted. You know, because it's, it's peace within us, it's peace around us, it's peace for the world in general. You know, it just oh, it encompasses so many different angles and so many different things that it is just far reaching it just yeah goes far and beyond what we could ever comprehend and that's the thing you know as humans we simply do not comprehend the peace of God 
because it is like it says in the scripture it is not peace the world can get you know like um in my other two videos on this on the fruits of the spirit a lot of the time the wor the the peace the world gives and the and the joy and the love that the world has on offer is circumstantial and you know if this happens you yes, I'll be, be feeling peaceful or you know, I'll be feeling joyous or loving or you know, that. But that is not God's peace. God's peace is supernatural peace that we can't comprehend as humans. Which makes it exciting because it is foolproof. It is absolute foolproof. Like there is no doubt that when you're walking in God's peace that it's gonna fail or run out because it's perfect peace from a perfect God yeah let's quickly look at some other scriptures um before I get too excited and carry away uh, carried away and just talk on and on and on about this um because it's just wow peace of God Oh, yeah, peace of God. 2 Thessalonians 3.16 says, Now may the Lord himself, the Lord of peace, pour into you his peace in every circumstance and, and in every possible way. The Lord's tangible presence be with you all. So, Romans... 16 20 doo -doo -doo -doo. hang on sorry yes um in the passion translation really it made me giggle and it but no not giggle but like go yes god um so let's read it and you'll you'll know why and the god of peace will swiftly pound Satan <laughs> into a pulp under your feet and the wonderful favour of our Lord Jesus will surround you. Yeah. Take that, Satan. You'll be pounded <laughs> to a pole underneath my feet. Yes. So that is authority given to us by Jesus. Or by the God of peace. To deal with Satan. I like that. That's that's good stuff. Romans ten fifteen says And how can the message be proclaimed if messengers have yet to be sent? This is why the scriptures say How welcome is the arrival of those proclaiming the joyful news of peace and the good things to come. To me, verse 15 talks about that commission of taking peace to others and how, yeah, as followers of Jesus, we, first of all, should be walking in the peace of God ourselves, but then, you know, extending it to others so that others can walk in that pace and know that pace and have that pace for themselves so I would encourage you today that if you are feeling your world is chaotic your mind is chaotic that everything is just crazy ridiculous in your um, in your atmosphere I encourage you to call out on the name of Jesus and ask for his peace and he will answer you he won't ignore you 
Who won't say, oh no, you can wait. Or, no, you have to do this to earn that pace. No. Peace of God is a free gift, like all the gifts of God. Free gift that is available when we need it and when we want to cultivate it in our lives. So, just, yeah, just call out to God and ask for his peace because I know for some people they are really, really struggling and their worlds are really chaotic and they just do need peace. They need the peace of God in their lives. And I think when we just in general look at the world right now and look at you know, crime rate and, and mental health um, stats, stuff like that, there are people that need the peace of God. So if you need it for yourself, ask God and if you can extend it and offer it to someone else be courageous and do so we're just going to finish uh, with Psalm 23 which may be very well known to you but I think it just is the chapter of peace uh, it talks about a lot of other stuff in Psalm 23, but I think it just kind of yeah, hones in on the peace of God. Yeah, so let's read this. Yahweh is my best friend and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers me a resting place for me in his luxurious love. He tracks me to an oasis of peace near the quiet brook of bliss that's where he restores and revives my life yeah. he opens before me the right path and takes me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that i can bring honor to his name even when your path takes me through the valley of the deepest darkness fear will never conquer me for you already have your authority is my strength and my peace the comfort of your love takes away my fear. I'll never be lonely for you are near. You become my delicious feast. Even when my enemies dare to fight. You anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. You give me all that I can drink of you until my cup overflows. So why would I fear the future? Only goodness and tender Love, pursue me all the days of my life. That afterwards, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence to be forever with you. Man, that just, oh, peace of God written all over it, eh? Oh, man. That is what the peace of God is all about. You know, not fearing the future he will never conquer me, for you already have. Yeah, we are conquerors in the name of Jesus. And we are not conquered by fear. Because Jesus has already conquered fear. Maybe if you are feeling that your world is spinning out of control, go and spend some time in psalm 23 reading those words and getting them into your spirit and going god your peace you said that your peace would sustain me restore me and you give me rest So, yeah, let's be people that 
cultivate the peace of God in our life, but not only the peace, the love, the joy, and all the other fruits of the Spirit, but yeah, let's cultivate those things in our life so that we can be different from the world where we, you know, stand out from others when things are turning to custard instead of, yeah, spinning out of control and ending up deep, deep down the rabbit hole, we stand firm in the peace of God. That's my encouragement to you today. I hope this was helpful and that you're feeling encouraged and feeling courageous because you've got this. God's peace is, is available for each and every one of you. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Love you all. Bye.